What up guys, 04 Haugen here, shooting this video uh, midweek, right? Haugen special here. Um, so, the reason I didn't post two videos this week was I, I started to shoot a what to do if you're new or just downloaded the game video, and I realized I was in way over my head. I didn't have notes written down, I was all over the place, there's so much to cover. But uh, anyway, first I just want to say thank you. To everyone supporting the channel, I wanted to ask a favor of you guys that are new to see if you can um, possibly, like, I, I just went to Reddit and to the forums and posted something on there. You know, there's a few people on our server that are like, yo, yo, I, I watch your videos, Chromius, shout outs to you and, and uh, Vic um, for screenshotting it. Sometimes in the guild, people will screenshot like a SD, they'll see that I got an SD and then they'll comment on chat saying like, yeah, you know, thanks for the videos. Keep up the good work. Well, I don't see that because, you know, I might be like playing at work or playing like while I'm playing with my daughter or something and not really see that message. So um, if you're going to take the time to send that message, I want to make sure that I'm able to receive it and uh, take any advice or suggestions or even just appreciation that you may be able to uh, send out or positive vibes or anything. So I just want to try to make a clear form of communication for us, uh, the viewers and myself. To help make some better content. I'm going to get start this video for a sec. Uh, gentlemen, we did a video with a while back. Had some scrolls he wanted me to summon for him. So I gladly did that. And uh, to my surprise, I was a little more successful than I thought I'd be. Um, anyways, but this new video is... So this isn't my standard traditional. Instead of bullshitting, I'm going to just hop right into the video I'm looking to create content on. And that is uh, progression for newer players. This video is daunting. There's so much to cover. So a little bit, of, you know, with keeping it on a smaller time frame. Um, that's also difficult. But what I first want to cover is the, <clears throat> the value in things. In So there's PvP, player versus player, and PvE, which I believe is player versus environment um, content. So the PvE content on where you'll be spending your time playing the game um, is important. Excuse me. So what we'll do first is weight the value of different types of things. One second. All right, all right. So that was the wife. She's on her way. I got to try to jam this up. This is going to be a, like a few-part video that I'm going to have to record on different scenes. Blip, blip, blip. Um, and then mash together to make one video. This is a pretty good four-star streak. It was like... With Renee, Aerith, uh, Marcus, you know, so that was that Marcus was actually a pretty good pull. I was excited about that. I was starting to get a little nervous, like, uh, eh, summons aren't too great, but you know, it's like, here's the thing. Okay, back to content, we'll get to summons later. Here's the way that things are weighted in the order that you should value progression, um, in my perspective or from my perspective. Tower is by far the most important thing. Um, I'll get into it a little later, but what I want to do at this point is go through the different things that hold value and then later explain to you why they're, why I, you know, listed them in that order. So first is tower, second is raids, third is six stars, and uh, finally it's sanctum. So, fuck, give me a second. All right, all right. So towers have the highest, by f like for the cost of keys to the payout and the reward, towers the best. Um, not only is there so from from clearing the towers, which reset each month, you're gonna get the philosopher stones to awaken one person. You're gonna get like probably I haven't done the math, but probably forty or fifty scrolls, probably a million gold, and somewhere about like. Uh, I don't know, a couple thousand gems. So it's a really great way to, to farm. So I just summoned him a Glen. That was dope because he didn't have... A, he actually has a T2 Glen, so that was pretty helpful to him. So let's see. That video is about done. Um, anyway, let, let me pause this, hop into the game real quick, and I can show you why. Uh, Bursek, thank you for allowing me to use your account to do summons. It's good content. I appreciate it. I'm glad you were happy with the summons. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of his little summoning video, and let's hop into the game. Alright, so here we are on Hard Tower. 
Um, let's go to normal real quick. Normal, we'll look at the rewards. So some three stars, scrolls, gold, scrolls, scrolls, gold. Okay, here's another really good reason. This awakening incarnation right here at 50 and 70 and the two star at 100. Okay, then you're going to come up to hard and you should be able to at least get to, you know, maybe 15 or 20 hard. Um, these 10 philosopher stones, you can buy philosopher stones from the shop for 300 gold. You'll come to find out that those are worth every penny, in my opinion. Um, so to get these at level 10 is really high. So you'll get five of them, which is worth 1500 gems. Um, and so, yeah, you just go through here. It's like stones, more stones, the same 50 and 70 with the awakening incarnations, more stones, the legendary scroll, more stones and the two star incarnation. And then hell, if you're new, stay away from hell. They have to buff it because the rewards are broken right now. Like the, uh, the gems are good, but when you get to go to these stones, I think it gives you two, which 35 heart hell is really hard to beat. I'm stuck on 40 hard, and I've heard that 45 and 50 are, like, almost impossible, so uh, probably can't go anywhere near those. But um, anyway, these rewards are super strong for you. What you're going to find early on is that you can't um, – you're going to have a hard time awakening people. So what I suggest you do uh, in this PvE content progression is first thing and most important thing every day is do your tower grind. Uh, use your keys, get up. If you're stuck, try something different. When you decide that you're stuck somewhere and can't go anywhere else, hop over to hard, get stuck on hard. And now you're going to, the next step is to go over to raids. So <clears throat> the raids rotate in and out through the day. Let's see here. The raids rotate in and out. Um, there are Numer, Python, Pantaris, um, Kraken, Havoc, and uh, that's probably it. There might be one or t one or two that I'm forgetting. But every day, three will be available. When you click here, you'll come on here. You click over here. Look at your rewards. These runes that drop from here, this Accuracy, Evasion, and Warrior, were always very highly weighted in uh, PvP. But Numer's really hard to farm early on. Um, you can always come in here and look at your raid hero statistic and show... Oh, there they are. Havoc, Kraken, Numer, Python. So there's just five. Whatever that is. One, two, three, four, five. And you can go to the level and see what are, what people are using like at each specific level. And uh, yeah, and get a feel for what, what type of your heroes you have. So raids are going to help you. What you got to do is Kraken's probably going to be your easiest. Hopefully you chose Lynn from your selective. People think that she's not the greatest, but she has 100% armor destroy. She melts these uh, raid bosses. And if you pick her and six her, you also have a chance to like do some nuke YOLO uh, PvP comps early on. You're going to get a free Prospera, and then hopefully you get a Blith soon. Those three can beat Kraken. Um, you'll be able to build Floria. We'll get in her a little later. But the idea is push your tower as far as you can. When you get stuck, you'll decide, okay, well, what, what do I need to beat that level? Whatever you're stuck at, 40 hard, 50 hard, whatever. <clears throat> then choose, like, then evolve your next person based on who you think would help you beat that level. Um, so what you're going to do then is, like, it, it doesn't make sense to six-star people that you don't have runes for. So let's say it was Numer. You should farm Kraken first if you're going to have heavy green people, depending on what teams and what summons you get. So start at four or wherever you can clear, safely beat. Beat it, beat it, beat it, and now you're going to get a bunch of runs. Then you use those runs and put them on your people. I can almost guarantee you'll be able to go two or three levels higher. Go up two or three levels higher, you're going to start getting better runs. Without even sixing anyone, you could go through rune progression, swap runes in and out, and then... Move up to the next level. Move up to the next level. You could probably you could get really far just by doing that, but um, the the raids that you'll be able to beat will only be open on certain days. So um, yeah, 
So then we're going to go six stars. I've got a video up. I'm not going to get too far into this about how to make a six star in a few hours. Um, search that up if you decide you need some help with it. Um, I would say definitely, definitely early on. If you can get Lynn, Prospera, and Blith, I've got some videos on where my Drake Hell team is like 30 seconds. Um, those three are super strong, especially when you're selectively picking who to attack. You could keep yourself alive. Um, briefly hop into three stars. Let's see, there are a few three stars. <clears throat> I think that I have all the three stars worth building built. I don't even use Melvin, but let's go ahead and look at his skills real quick. So Melvin, okay, okay, whatever. Let's hop into Melvin. So his active gives you physical defense down and stun, which is decent. Uh, second auto is crit rate and attack speed. And third auto is excessive bleeding. Plus 7% of the ma enemy's max HP is bonus damage. So, now, see, some of these skills are kind of broken. The whole 7% uh, of the enemy's max HP, it's like when I hit with Lin, I can watch the bar like, do, 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 do. Just fucking take the bar down. Melvin, though, I don't really see that. I, I can hit his active, I can watch, and I can barely see a sliver of the bar come down. Saiho, you know, they used to have Hall of Heroes. If you're familiar with, like, uh, Summoner's War, they'd have a Nat 4 dungeon open once or twice a month, or once a month, every month or two. And uh, when I got in, they had this chick, and she wasn't anything great, but I was able to farm six or seven of her, whatever it was, maybe, yeah, six or seven, through this event, and uh, that was super helpful to me. So I did her early on, don't use her anymore, but when she skills, you can see the damage go down. You know, she has like one of those, uh, I don't know, inflicts something close to the 10%. Okay, so this is 10% of the HP, and I can see it. With Melvin, I don't really see it, but he is a good buffer. A lot of people like him, and the best thing about a Nat 3 is you can get a lot of them. So when you make Melvin a 6, if you're going to, or you feed these other 3 stars into him, if you feed a 3 star into him, there's a chance that he will awaken his next passive skill. See right here. You can, and then you get to choose what these passive skills are. So obviously I was planning on building him and then realized I was didn't really care for him that much. So there are a few that are worth, early on, that are worth it. There's a... Uh, what is it? Melvin? Hannah, a lot of people like Hannah. She's got some dope skill sets. She's got uh, attack and vamp on everybody with an active. Her second auto is physical defense up and a heal. So it's a heal on her second auto, which is nice. Third is magic power up for the three allies that have the highest magic and gains immunity against all harmful effects for five seconds. So I'm not sure if that immunity applies to everybody or just her. Um, Helen, I did build Helen early on. You know, she's just in that three. So you get lots of her. And you could evolve the threes to fours and make her a five star with a bunch of four stars. And she'll get some awakened bumps. But any of these nat threes you're not really going to use higher up. Um, who was the one I said? Oh, Floria though. Floria is, is, uh, was one of my girls early on. Next time they have a trans event where they pay you to trans somebody, I'm going to do her. I don't use her, but whatever. Um, so her she heals based on her magic power for her active, which is good for a secondary healer. Um, second auto increases defense and immunity. So this is like Zemmer's shield on her second auto, similar to Zemmer. And then third auto transforms two enemies into squirrels. For five seconds. This is super OP for tower. Now in hell you can't transform them into squirrels on the boss levels. But unless this got nerfed, any hard or normal level, it's like if you can get her to the boss and you get some attack speed built into her, she'll just keep the boss a squirrel. It just like transforms them in there and they can't do anything and it keeps you safe. So look into trying her even as a five star and see if you like her skills. I really did. And then I got her fast, and she just, before I could clear, before I got better people to clear tower, she would just auto-lock them down. So, uh, she's new, or she's a great three-star too, but.
But see, the three stars are cheap to... That, that's the other thing. They're also really cheap to transcend. But it gets tricky. So you're going to get Prospera. Pushing Prospera's Awakens, whether you're getting one star or two stars into Prospera, is probably the best choice. Oh, God. Fucking space is running out on the phone. So, uh, anyway, Prospera... Where was that? Prospera. Okay, your Awakens, you want to put into a Prospera first. Who's someone I don't have Awakened? Okay... Let's see. I don't have any one star. So now we're getting into Awakens. Good God. What the fuck? So you got Arena, Raid, and Guild. Arena, you're going to come over here and always buy this one. If you have to set what's called a Fodder D, go into your Arena. If you're brand new, you can still get this every week. It's a lot harder, but work for it. It's one of the most important things you can do early on. Um, what you need to do is put your defense up to one person. Like, don't set a defense of, like, six people. Not that it'd matter. And then go to Arena and beat ten people, you know, every day. Just, like, doing your things. Get your 400 points and summon that. Also, in the raid section here, you can come over here and buy one here as well. So make sure you're farming enough raid to get you these coins and buy those two incarnations each week. You'll get two star incarnations from your calendar and from tower, once you're able to beat tower... This two-star incarnation automatically gives you a bump. So two-star incarnation will automatically give you one of these over here on this side. Open one of them up. So what's going to happen when they're new, let's say Morox, it's going to show these locked. And if you unlock one with an Awakened power-up, you're going to get to choose one of these things. Um, so what you do is when you go to Awaken, the one-star incarnation is going to give you a 20% chance to open that up. When you click it, if it fails, it gives you half of the percentage into your Awaken level. So, the reason I'm getting into that is because if you use a one-star incarnation and you put three of them into somebody and fail, don't use the two-star. Lock the two-star, hold on to it, and wait until you get your one-star power-up. Um, that might not, not make sense now, but trust me, you'll benefit from it because... If you're going to get fails, if you get seven more fails, you're going to automatically get the level up. If you use your two star, it goes back to zero. So you'll figure it out on your own, but that's the best way to use them. Okay, some people come from a game like Summoner's War, and they can understand how a game like this works. If you haven't, or you know any other game like this, um, there's different classes of heroes. So when you summon someone, they call it a natural three, four, or five star. Depending on how they come, so we're just looking at fire here. If we can see all these ones at three stars, then you've got all these people at four stars and all these people at five stars. So what that means is if you summon just Thea, you, anyone you can make a six star. Say any anyone you can make a six star, but just Thea comes as a five, meaning she's a nat five hero and she's going to be a lot stronger. Nat fives take 30 stones to awaken, nat fours take 20. Or to transcend, I'm sorry. And three stars take only ten stones. So you can take any three star. There's not really a good fire one. Um, whatever. You could take any one of them, Rex. Make him a six star. You'd have to make him a four star first, then a five star, and a six star. You can make him a six star. He's just not going to be anywhere near as strong as somebody that comes as a nat five. So that's important to understand if you're new. But the reason I got into that is because if you have a nat 5, if you have awakened incarnations, you're only going to want to put them into nat 5s, in my opinion. Uh, all right, I'm going to have to take a break, guys. I will be back a little later. What up, guys? I am not fucking around here. I'm literally in the car fucking filming the back end of this video. Forgive my language. I'm trying to be on point. So this next stuff is going to be super hyper-focused. Um, spit out as much info as I can. This is, I, I took a little, got a little note card, jotted down, full ass note card, full of stuff. So, uh, and it's super late. I'm way overdue on bedtime. Past freaking, uh, way past due on, I got work in a few hours and uh construction worker, but you know what? I just had a real good chat with our, our number one guy and, uh, he encouraged me to make some uh, new content for some higher end stuff, but I want to finish out this level for the lower end stuff um, because this is all stuff that no one's really going to tell you. I mean, if you know and you read into it, you'll figure it out, but uh, even half this stuff you won't know 
and you'll just have to figure out on your own over time. So, so the reason I said earlier that you don't feed a nat four is because when you use a nat four to level up any nat four leveled up by itself, um, gives it a hundred percent chance. Now, if they're, if they're at five star, if they're at four star, it gives them, uh, actually it's, it doesn't matter if they're nat four or not, but if you take a nat four and, and I were to feed this guy four nat fours, they would have 50% chance of peace. But instead what I did was I waited and I got him, his five star mats are all the same. And so once I evolve him, he's going to get five skill ups. Boop, boop, boop. So now he's red. He doesn't have his leader, but he's red. So anyway, I just want to share that little bit of info um, if you didn't know that. But that's why you saved the nat fours. Okay, so where we left off, we were talking about runes, um, you know, upscaling your runes. So anything under uh, five-star run, you don't want to put past level 12. It's just a waste of time. You're going to end up selling all those runes out in the end anyway. Um there are special events that you want to maximize. So you want to level your runes to the point that they'll help you, but you're not really wasting time and resources because um, you're going to have these events that are like endless events where you can spend keys and just get rewards for spending your regular amount of events. There's always there's also a double experience about every weekend or so, every other weekend. There's half-price rune removal. Or there's free rune removal, and there's half price rune power up. So, aside from leveling up like a rune that you just got, don't spend a lot of money during the week wasting time. I mean, I just spent five million. Um, I'm gonna work on some switching some comps over for uh, next week. So I spent money because I don't even have a use for it anyway. But uh, but do yourself a favor and set your zero. So like instead of being broke at zero. Consider yourself broke if you don't have a million. So you always want to try to have a million or five million in the bank. So when those half price rune removal days come, you can just power up and maximize from it. So if you didn't know that, now you know. Um, there's also half price mileage and half price special summoning that come up every, not as frequent, every two or three months, um, give or take. Um, okay, so so... This is really important. It sounds stupid, but we have a saying like in the Iron Workers that's uh, plan your work and work your plan. It's like if you have to do something like get a piece of paper, you know, it's like I want to know I want to know who my next six star is. I want to know like like right now I've got 23 stones, so I'm coming up on 30. Like, what's my plan? I just drew Lucius, right? Uh, second Lucius, a third Lucius so I can T2 him. But what I need to do here in the next few days is get him to max level and get him ready, you know, get some more five-star food ready so I can evolve him once I get the stones, right? So um, that's what I'm working on now. I just did that guy just because I had his mats already. But, uh, but yeah, so I know that that's coming up. You know, this is a good example like these griffins. So even if you take anybody, right, uh, I've already done everyone I have duplicates of. But even if I decided to make her a six star, right? And I didn't have these three. I just made her a six star by herself. Or David, for example. David's a better example. Um, if I made him a six star and then I drew these other three, I would still evolve them to a five star before I fed them to him. So it makes sense to do it when you're making them a six star. But even afterwards, when I first had Dahar, I would take five stars. I, I would just I'd summon a four star Dahar and I'd be like, fuck yeah. I'm going to get an awaken bump and I'd try to feed it to her and it wouldn't work. It's got a 50% chance. The better thing to do is just make this a five star and then feed it into him, whether he's a six or not. Also leader skill. See this little leader skill up top. You can see how this one isn't lit up over here, but, but this one is, um, if you feed him into another one, let's say I had this one that was already a five star and I turn this one into a, uh, to level him up and I powered this one into this one the leader skill would transfer so that's kind of common knowledge but if you didn't know that now you know if you don't have a leader skill and you're over here you have to get these five awakens plus this one skill or plus the leader 
before you can transcend him. So anyway, that's getting a little deep. I'm going to focus on getting this list done and, uh, and get out of here. So know your work, work your plan. Okay. So like on the weekends, like maybe, you know, you can grind during the week. Like you can't do as much during the weekend, but during the week you can save your keys during the week. I mean, do your dailies, get your hundred gems. Um, but like I used to have plans, like I'm going to farm Numer when it comes up. I also need to farm the green sanctum cause I got to max out Lynn and I got to do this, this and that. Um, you know, Lynn, I, there was just a thing that came up in chat. It was like, well, who should I get? This, this guy came up and, uh, Oh, it's not on this. It wasn't on this chat, but um, this guy came up and he's like, well, who should I get, Lynn, or for my thing? And I said Lynn, and then another guy and Dex, Ish and Dex both said, no, don't do Lynn, do Patricia. Well, like I said, I mean, I wasn't going to get into him with him, but I do want to explain it on the video. I'm never going to try to steer you the wrong way, anyone in this game. Like, even if you're stomping me out, you know what? Fair. Like, my hat's off to you. You beat me. I'll probably build a team that'll beat you back. But until then, you know, good game. But uh, I'm never going to intentionally steer anyone wrong. What I am going to do is offer my suggestion on why, or, you know, let you know why. I'm not, like, just trying to sabotage anybody. But they're like, well, you could fuse Lynn. Yes, you could later on in the game. But she's not going to, Patricia isn't going to help you early on. I mean, I don't know. I don't see, like, mages aren't really good until their second or third transcendence, and you're going to be playing the first month or two before you even get anyone to max level awaken, and you've got a god, so you're probably going to do Prospera first, so it wouldn't make sense to do Patricia, in my opinion, unless you knew you were buying the growth pack, which comes with another one, and then you drew Patricia, or whatever the one is that comes with the hero scroll, and then you drew Patricia, then you knew you could transcend her. But uh, anyway, aside from that, you know, not only do I have a plan on knowing who I'm going to six, what runes I want to farm, but I also know who I would do if I didn't have another option. Right now I have Lucius, right? If I didn't have Lucius, I would probably keep 30 stones in the bank. If I got to 60 stones, then I would probably start working on Gwen. He's already got his stuff. He's also, I also have three dupes of him, so, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, you just gotta kinda, I've, I've, you can see I've got these red line people, I always know who I'm putting my incarnations into, right now it happens to be Elheim, um, I don't really have anyone else that I can do, I mean, I got this Noir, Luther, and that's about it, Marcus, and then what, Morox. So, anyway, know what you're going to do, right? If you have to open up a separate app on your phone and say, okay, when Kraken's up, I'm going to farm Kraken. If Kraken's not up, I'm going to do Green Sanctum. If Green Sanctum's not up, I'm going to just save my keys for when those days come up. Or I'm going to do Scenario. Or I'm just going to save my, you know, whatever it is. Stick to a plan. You know, it's really easy, as you can see, that I do in these videos. It's really easy to get all over the place in a game like this. And when you can focus on what you want and work towards it, it makes it so much easier. Okay, on to the next, on to the next. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Rune sets you want. Okay, yeah, like know what rune sets you want on your people. Like maybe you have uh, maybe you have Vamp on Prospera, but you're like, well, she's already got an auto Vamp, and I, I kind of would want to get Rage. So, you know, know what you would want to switch out. Oh, craft runes. You can craft runes here. Uh, where is this? In this little workroom, Rune Craft House. And so you come over to high, you pick the rune you want. You can buy this stuff in the uh, shop and you can buy this stuff. You can get this stuff from the magic shop and in the raids. So anyway, if you know like, fuck, I'm never going to, I'm not going to have a numer team for a long time, but I need warrior runes or speed runes or whatever it is. Just come over here and craft the motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to get the greatest runes. Maybe you will. You probably won't. But you'll at least get some six-star runes that you can start working with. Um, I had to do that early on. Always, always uh, buy these spaces for your magic shop. Oh, look. It's got five minutes left on it, so I probably shouldn't refresh it. But see, I always buy these normal hero scrolls and the premium accessory scrolls. If you look at this, 
you got a one star. This guy down here, this Murphy, a one star is five grand. A scroll is two thousand. So you're already saving money by buying the scrolls. And when I evolve one star, someone asked about this earlier. They're like, "Do I do three stars? Can I evolve them?" Yeah, I evolve all the way up from one stars. I take my one stars. It's in my it's in my hero leveling uh, video, so I'm not really gonna get into it. But uh, open up the shop. There's also runes you could buy. So that's another reason. Not that I ever do it now, but early on, that's a reason you keep a million dollars in the bank is so that if there's a rune that pops up, you could buy it from the shop, right? So. Um, as you do that, so you're like, okay, well, I'll level up some runes. I've got $1.1 million, but then be like, well, you know what? Next week I'm going to just save two. I want 2 million to be my, my zero, you know, my, my, uh, and eventually you'll just get more and more and more. And then you'd be like, okay, well I save and then double, ex double or half price rune comes and you just get to go crazy. Um, pa -pa! open up the shop. Okay. So. This is actually kind of cool because this world arena opened up. Um, you can not only look at like the top person in your server, like ours is Dex, but you can look at the top people in all other servers. So you might be like, well, this guy lays low, but he always wins. You can come in and check him out and then uh, look at his heroes and look at his builds across servers. Without, you know, what you, what you used to have to do for this is log into a bogus account or a separate made account on another server and then kind of look into people for the super tryhards. And you can come in and look at their builds and see what type of accessories they got on here and just get a feel for like, okay, well, what are they doing with their uh, damage dealers? Are they running accuracy here? Or are they running evasion still? Or, you know, what the fuck's going on? So... 64 Benishia. What the fuck? With no runes. Accuracy evasion. Alright. Hmm. Maybe for, uh... Maybe for that damn, uh... Minor arena. But, yeah. Anyway, um... Uh, fuck, this video's running way long. But you can go to see who now just because you click someone like this and then you you go to uh, click on them. This is going to be the defense that they have set right now. It isn't the defense that they had set at the end of the week when they won. So keep that in mind. I've tested that with a guy in my guild who's in the top 10. So, you know, I don't know. Sometimes people will put like a false D. They'll either like. They'll put someone who's good, but it's not necessarily geared for their comp. So you're like, oh shit, I can beat Dex, right? And then you might beat him a few times. And then during when Arena closes, like closer to the end of the, the week, he's going to put his real defense in. Or he's going to go into his Arena and he's going to go, uh, he's going to do this, right? Let's see. Major Arena, he's going to do this, which luckily not everybody watches my videos but he's going to do this and have just one person on his skill set so the only person that's going to skill on my team is just thea which is kind of crazy because so i'm intentionally losing but i am getting some wins every once in a while so uh so that's good i've got some runes i'm going to switch out tomorrow but i as re as i'm recording this i want to see how this does i've got stomped a few times but um to be relative, I want to know uh, how strong this team is versus him. So tomorrow when I switch, I can see what the effect is. Okay, so you can look at Heroes Through the World Arena. Join a guild. If you join a guild, it has a lot of perks, like not just answering simple questions and all that. Um, the guild comes with the ability to... Collect guild raid points. I should have skilled Justia first. I could have had a chance to get him with Justia. Uh, it might have looked like I didn't, but there was a little hesitation there on his end. But he's just so heavy with uh, blue that it would be hard for me to eat that up. Well, anyway, I lost two points. Okay, so let me bust this video out. This is going to be a longer one, guys. This is for the newer people. The newer people are going to have to watch this a few times, too, if they decide they want to gather as much information from it. Um, 
Join a guild. The guild comes with a lot of perks, benefits. So there's a mythical investigation. Uh, people asked about it last time. And, uh, you know, the investigations are huge. Here I am looking like a fucking rookie because I don't have mine done. So that'll be the last thing I bust out on this video. Um, but yeah, the, the investigations are big. And the mythical investigation, I had it written down. It's in one of my last videos. But I believe it's two fires and one green. And it's one tank, one healer, and one mage. If I'm not mistaken. But anyway. Um, this stuff's a good way. You're going to generate probably 150,000 gold a day. You're going to get some runes that sell. You're going to get some experience on your people. And, uh, and every once in a while, you're going to get a legendary scroll or a mythical hero scroll here. And what that allows you to do is, like, when I got mine, I sat on it for like a month. And I just waited till I can could transcend the people to get 100% on it. So if you ever get one of these that you can't do, um, I would suggest just waiting till you can get it to get 100%. But some people like to run it at like 80% chance. You'll find out when you get one. But, uh, but yeah, so that's another thing to consider if you're not knowing who to transcend early on. You're going to need transcended people to get that investigation. And so maybe you could consider a tank, a healer, or a mage that's either fire or earth. So, um, yeah, this video is running long. i got to merge it with some other ones. I'm tired as hell. I did the best I could with this, but I really wanted to bust out this video. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm in the car, right, shooting it. Because I know um, if I get all soft-spoken, it's harder to follow that content. And it just doesn't feel natural. So, um... Yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna try to push, do everything I can to push tower this this month because I didn't get it last month. So once I get the next uh, stones here to do Lucius, then I'm gonna try to beat this forty hell because I started reading about it on some forums and stuff, and it's probably not all that hard. See shops back up. Now I have a thing. So here's the other thing: if you're looking to save resources, I would not suggest buying packs. People like to buy packs, but you can see that if you can spend your money, your gems, on running raids and getting what you need, whether it's ra uh, the raids or the sanctums or whatever, and if you use your gems, like if you used $1,500 worth of gems and you had any amount of gold, like a million gold, you could easily buy 10 scrolls for way... Oh, shit. Look at There's a stone I need. Um, I'm always going to buy those. So... I'm not even really paying attention right now, but um, what I'll do is like if I get a scroll and I get on a streak, I'll refresh three times after I buy a scroll. And if nothing pops up, then nothing pops up. But I'm talking about a premium or accessory scroll. I'm going to refresh three times after I buy it. This is one, two. And if I get one, sometimes it'll just be, I'll just be hot. It's like a casino or something. And I'll keep getting premium scrolls. But if I'm not, no, no, I'll just call it and whatever. But what? Two stones? You kidding me? Those things do not pop up often. So maybe I'll do this more as I'm on a video. That's crazy. But uh, but yeah, you can see that these... So when you, when you get five stones from... Like, I'll pay all day 300 for a stone. See, look, here's, here's another freaking premium. So it keeps me kind of refreshing. Now, it sounds like it's a dump of resources, and it kind of is, but there's not really a better way to spend your resources when you get up to a higher level. So, uh, yeah, if you decide, like, you're super frugal or you, you want to decide to spend money the best way that you can, you use the gems, you farm, you get gold, and then you use the gold to buy the scrolls here. So, um, yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you're new... Don't get discouraged. You know, you can't expect to be great off the bat. It's going to take time. That's what makes it fun. Enjoy the journey, right? It's like everyone wants to be in the top like 10 or 20 or whatever. And uh, it's fun, but it's not as fun as it is like getting there and figuring out the tower and trying that same level like five or six times being like, fuck, man, I can't get it. I can't get it. You know, I'm going to beat 40. And then I'm going to get stuck on a level that's like insanely hard that I have no chance of beating until they nerf it. And then I'm just going to be like, well, great. Now tower is not even fun anymore. So um, enjoy it. You know, enjoy the game. You play for fun. 
you know, there's always going to be fucking trolls in chat. There's always going to be people that are talking shit and trying to steer you the wrong way. And uh, don't pay any mind to them. You know, you've watched this video, right? There aren't very few people who, there are only very few people who are going to watch this all the way to the end. If you have, subscribe to the channel. What the hell is the matter with you? You've invested this much time already. You know, I don't even care about you hitting the like button. Like what I, I thought about the other day. I'm like, why am I asking people to hit the like button? What does it even do anyway? Gives me a thumbs up. What do I care? Um, you know, people subscribing to the channel lets me know that they're interested in seeing it. If you like it, like it, whatever. But uh, I thought about it. And I'm like, damn, this video has that many likes. This video has that many likes. And I'm like, I don't really care. But definitely babbling, definitely late night. I wanted to put this out. Now I got to edit it up. I can't not edit it up. I'm all fucking hyped up. I might as well just stay up and go to work. But uh, putting this out for everybody. I didn't I didn't get one earlier this week and I regretted it. So I just took some time for you guys. Upload this video. And it looks like I'm going to have a good week next week with these summons. And uh, Translucious here tonight. If I get five more freaking stones... Not that I would. See, look at this. I'm fucking on fire. I am on fire. I'll take this shit all night. All night. I did spend about 500, uh, or five or six million on, on runes. I just want to show you guys this because if anyone knows me or follows the channel or <clears throat> wants to know what I got going on, I'm going to try to explain this to some guildies. But what I'm going to do tomorrow is. I'm going to take Justhea, Zenon, and Styx. Styx isn't really the hottest, but I don't have a Transcadius that I can run. And I'm going to take Styx, and I'm going to switch out their... Uh, I'm going to switch out their slot 4. Their slot 3 and 4. Like for Styx, I'm going to just switch it to speed. because So I've got this one, this one, and this one I just maxed today. And then... Um, Justhea and Zenin, like, this might be a huge failed attempt, or it might be like a trendsetter thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two, and I'm going to make them um, uh, accuracy. I'm going to pull this double evasion set. Oh, although, look at that sub. 20% crit damage, 10% accuracy. <sighs> oh, that's going to stay. That's a vamp rune. Possibly. Anyway, let me look into it tomorrow. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove their... No, it's not going to stay. It's evasion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove their evasion... Two evasion slots and their evasion set. <clears throat> I'm going to replace it with accuracy, attack speed down here, and uh, HP over here. Right? So they're all going to be... They're all T3, so that's going to be a significant jump in uh, HP. And then... They're going to be quicker, so that quickness might be enough to get my skill off first. So I'm hoping that by put, giving everybody about 15, 20 more speed um, and having them at 35%, they might beat some of those those comps, you know, because sometimes it's just like I'm a half a second too slow. So, uh, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I don't have a choice. I got to get off, guys. It's late. I always have a hard time getting off when it's late. I don't know why. <clears throat> It's not a big deal, but yeah, put this out there for you. Like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Leave me a comment if you're going to comment in the game or uh, whatever it is. Leave me a comment here, and I will. I read them all. They come up as notifications on my phone, and I appreciate them all. So uh, yeah, everybody, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one.